Hey, this is René. Welcome back to the fifth part of this programming tutorial where we will talk about um, the RSI indicator and how we can receive the data from this indicator. So we talked about how to create a new expert advisor. We talked about variables, functions and control structures in the last parts. If you did not see them, you should definitely go back and watch them because we will need pretty much all of this in this um, part. So um, the, oh, I don't want to close this. Uh, we have the RSI indicator, you can see it here. Um, it's pretty much a line <laughs> that is running from minimum zero to maximum 100. And it also, uh, it always has one value for every candle. So the, the concept, the MetaTrader 5 is that every candle has a different RSI value and the value does not change it, okay, it, it does change for the um, current candle because it's still in calculation, but it never changes for the later or the earlier candles. So um, this candle here has the index one because the current candle always has the index zero and this has the index one. This is index two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. So um, you can see it like this, this is candle with index 54. Uh, whenever there is a new candle, so if five minutes are over, we will see that there is a new candle, then all these um, values um, increase, will be increased by one. So then the new candle has the index zero and this is index one if there is a new candle. So yeah, you will, you will understand that later when we um, retrieve the value from the RSI. And um, not only the candles have indexes, uh, have these um, values, but also the RSI values. So um, for this candle, this is the RSI value of 60.73 and it is at index number one. And this might be index number three and it has the value of uh, 57.03. And whenever we want to receive the value from an indicator, we first of all have to um, uh, we have to um, uh, uh, we have to tell the computer what kind of RSI indicator this is because the um, RSI and pretty much every indicator they do have inputs like the period it could be 14 could be 15 could be 20 and could be whatever and we have to tell the computer what exact type of RSI we want to calculate and for that reason we uh, will um, um, we will declare a handle and we can call it RSI handle. It's just an integer number, so nothing special. And we get it or we receive this handle for this exact RSI by using a function which is called IRSI. You can see it in the documentation by pressing F1. The function returns the handle of the relative strength in indicator. It has only one buffer. And uh, you can see the signature of this function here and I will simply paste, uh, copy and paste it in my programming uh, code here. So if we use this function you can see there are several parameters that are required for this function to operate. So first of all we have to use the symbol. The symbol is for in this case euro US dollar. Uh, so this is a text and we can write it like this euro US dollar. Then we need the period. The period is the time frame. And the time frame in this case is M5, so it's five for five minutes. And then we need the, um, the, the moving average period. This is now the um, period that is, uh, that you, you can see when you detach the RSI to the chart and it's 14 by default. So if you do it like this, um, then um, in the end, as a, as a last, part of this it needs the um, the calculation price and the calculation price um, wait a second yeah I don't know the calculation price can be priced close in this case because it's the close price of the um, last candles and this is just part of an enumeration so this is pretty much just an identifier for a number you can also write zero and if I do it like this, um, I have an RSI handle, which 
is just an integer number, but this integer number that is stored in this variable with the name RSI handle, it clearly identifies what kind of RSI we want to um, we want to use because it is the RSI in the Euro US dollar chart in the five minute time frame. It has 14 periods and it is um, and the moving average that is used for the calculation of the RSI is applied to the close prices of the candle. So um, if I if I did all this, I can do something else. I can uh, receive the value of the indicator. And um, if I want to do this, I have to use a uh, another function which is called copy, copy buffer and the buffer is pretty much just a buffer like the name says and it contains all the values of the indicator so the buffer has um, it had, has different values I, I told you already that um, every index here has a value and all these values are stored in the buffer uh, of the RSI so I want to receive the buffer of the RSI um, first of all you have to tell the function what kind of indicator I want to read and I provide the RSI handle because it has all the information about the indicator. Then I provide the buffer number, it is zero because um, counting starts from zero in this case and um, it only has one buffer so this buffer has the index zero. And then we have a starting position which could be one, we have a count like how many um, values do we want to receive and then we need an array and this is uh, something new because an array is declared like this. So um, an array is pretty much um, a, you can say it's a variable, but it doesn't store only one double value, but it can store multiple double values. Like if I declare this, um, oh, wait, let me, let me show you. If I declare this um, RSI, array you can clearly say that it is an array because it has these uh, square brackets behind it and this has the size of two so i can store two values in it at the index zero maybe i can store like one value and at the index one um, i can store another value counting starts from one again so there is only index zero and index one and there is no index two so this is not not a valid operation because it says index is out of range. So there is only index zero or one. Or I could say that I want to store three values in it and then this is working fine. So um, yeah, if I store two values maybe and if I print these values, um, you will see that the two values will be printed and that is working fine. So um, an array is pretty much just a way to store multiple data um, of one type without using 100 variables. So um, yeah, I, I can like use the several. I can use the um, any index of this array just like a normal variable. So I could um, yeah, I can I can read data from the index at index uh, from the array at index zero. I can um, put new data um, into this array at the index zero and overwrite the old data like I can show you. I can change the data at any point. RSI zero could be two now and RSI one could be, um, I don't know, another number. This could be too big already for a double type. And if I do it like this, you can say that First, the first values uh, will be printed and then the new values that I changed them into. So um, for the copy buffer function, we have to provide an array because um, we will receive data from this integer, uh, from this, from this, um, uh, uh, come help me, from this indicator and it could be either one, uh, uh, it could be either one value or it could be 10 values or it could be 100 values. Um, because we could uh, say that we only want like this value from this candle or we can say that we want th this and this and this value or we could say that we want all these values and that's pretty much what you define in here because um, this time I said that I want uh, to start at position 1 which is uh, this candle because this is index 0, this is index 1 and I want to have um, that is defined in this 
parameter here count and I want to receive one value. So I start here and I receive one value, which will be only this value. But I could, I could also say that I want to start here and if I put um, a count of three, I would receive uh, receive these three values, which would be stored in this array. So you see, um, it absolutely makes sense that there is an array because we do not, um, or this function does not really know how many values you want to receive. And this is an, um, an, an array of um, an undefined length. length. So this value, uh, this, this function will take care of expanding the array before putting new data in it. But um, the good point is you don't really have to, um, you have to think about it because this function does all this for us and we can simply use the value um, that is stored in the array at index zero now and it will be the value of the indicator at index zero. So at this point the RSI has the value of uh, 76.40 and um, like in the experts tab you can see 76.4 uh, yeah whatever and it's it's not rounded but it's the same number and I can tell you what happens if we have a count of two maybe um, then this RSI um, array has two values stored inside and you can see that um, at the point zero um, yeah wait a second do, do, do. let's do this again so at this point there's the value of um, this is ah this is not working because I switched the time frame uh, I want to have the minute 5 RSI and at this point there is uh, 76.40 you will find it here and at this point the RSI is uh, 63.12 and you will find it here. So this is working, but um, we only need one value because that is enough for us and we only receive one. If I do it like this, this should um, throw an error, I guess, because um, yeah, you see our array is out of range because um, I want to uh, receive the uh, value at array index one, but the problem is that we do only have one value inside of this array. So um, I can only receive the value at index uh, zero and not at index one. So you can see uh, if you if you ever have an array out of um, out of bound or I don't know how they call it here array out of range. Um, if you find this error, you can be pretty sure that you try to receive data from an uh, an array that is um, yeah that is at an index higher than the size of this array. So if I do it like this, there's no error and everything is working fine. Okay, got it. So um, this is working fine, but what I want to do is I want to enhance um, or make this function even better or easier because this function wants to have the symbol and we can either write the symbol like this, like euro US dollar, or we can use underscore symbol because this is a um, system variable and this contains the symbol name. So if I want to, if I print this, you will see that this value, uh, this variable contains euro US dollar. So I don't have to write euro US dollar. I can simply write symbol, and it will also um, always get the symbol of the current chart. Same for the time frame. Uh, I can use um, period current because this will get the time frame of the current chart, and um, yeah, that's that's good. That's it. Um, yeah, like for this zero, I can write price close because it's easier to read and it's it's all the same. So this is working. And if I change time frames now, you can see that I still get the right value because um, the the time frame or the period is automatically taken from the current chart. Good. Okay, that's it. We learned how to use a indicator um, and you do this by um, declaring and receiving an uh, indicator handle. A handle is nothing more but a um, an integer number that stores information about um, the exact type of indicator you want to receive. Then we declare an array um, of type double which will hold the result of the copy buffer function uh, and the result of the copy buffer function is the values of the RSI and 
the complete buffer function requires a handle for the um, indicator. <clears throat> it requires the information about the buffer you want to read and it requires the information um, of uh, about where to start and how many values you want to receive and of course the array where the data shall be stored. That's it. That's it for this tutorial. That's it for today. Um, you can of course play along with this concept as you can with any other parts of the series and learn more about indicators. You can try to receive values from the IMA um, uh, indicator, which is a moving average indicator, or any other indicator like I bands is for Bollinger bands, and yeah, you can just play play along with this and try if you if you can receive some other data. And that's it for today. I will see you next time when we talk about how to open trades. This will be a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit more complicated, but it's okay, and we'll get there and we will understand everything. So I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.